Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, what I have is an eval card from Texas Instruments. It's this PMP 22509. It's kind of an early revision, so I was kind of lucky to get my hands on one. Now, I've used this control chip before. I've used it for years, actually. Uh, it's a really cool control chip. This control chip is great for active clamp four converters and that's what this port does so this kind of converter gives you an isolated voltage from input to output meaning galvanic isolation put an ohm meter between your input and your output voltage you're not going to see any ohms it's going to be high ohms okay uh, you can high pot you know if you know what that is where you put 500 volts thousand volts uh you know it's basically like an ohm meter that's capable of 500 or thousand volts from input to output, and this guy's gonna be isolated. No connection from input to output. It uses a transformer, so yeah. And it's kind of a small transformer, so this little guy right here. Now this guy's five volts, five amps. So, you know, this this guy's only 25 watts for this little board. But in something not much bigger than this, you can easily double that power, or even triple that power easily. Uh, 150 watts in a board not too much bigger than this. The magnetic here and this output conductor are going to grow. Okay, So this is an isolated DC to DC converter. And it's a form of a forward converter called an active clamp forward converter, as I mentioned. So I'm going to kind of explain what that is, but it's really cool is what it is. And you know, these are really robust designs. They're pretty easy to scale. So you can change the voltage ratio, you can change the frequency, you can do different things to get more power, different voltages. If you don't want five volts, maybe you want 12, 13, 14 volts, you know, then, you know, for car audio, maybe you want to do an isolated power supply. Maybe you want to charge some super caps or who knows, you know or even have a higher or even lower voltage or you have multiple voltages there's all kinds of things you can do with an ice age uh, converter because you have a transformer it's like another knob to turn to get the output voltage on a basic uh dc dc converter you're either bucking the voltage down or boosting it up and you have a ratio and you know, you get too far out of, say, a 4x ratio, it starts getting dicey, you know. But with a transformer, you got turns ratio. Now you got turns ratio plus the duty cycle ratio. So you got, that's what I mean by that second knob to turn. So, pretty cool. And again, isolation. So, isolation is a cool thing. It breaks up the possibility of having ground loops from input to output. Uh, filtering from input to output helps that. Uh, there's a lot of uh, you know benefits from that. What if you wanted instead of plus five volts of five amps, maybe you wanted minus five volts of five amps. Well, you just hook it up in reverse. It doesn't matter. It's not reference to the input. It's only reference to itself on the output. Okay. Well, I'm going to bring the camera over and show you a close up of this board. But I'm going to pull out my whiteboard here. And, and just give you a quick uh, introduction to what a four converter and an active clamp four converter does, okay? All right, let's do that. Guys, my circuit. Hopefully you can read that. Uh, input, output, right? So our input bulk capacitor and our control circuit driving our FET, which turns on and off this transformer. And we have a current sent, so as current goes through this, the voltage gets picked up off this current sense and goes back to the control chip. So it can look pulse by pulse. Every pulse, every time that transistor turns on, this chip can look at that current to see if it's within limits and can control the pulse width, okay? Then the other thing is on the output, we have a voltage feedback, top resistor, bottom resistor feedback, comes over to set this off a coupler. It feeds into this circuit, okay? There'll be some other components around it, but basically it feeds this diode, and that diode transfers the message to this side of the circuit, 
you know, to the feedback on that side, okay? So that's our current feedback, our voltage feedback. Points out that we have two loops. We have an internal current sense loop working every, because that's the other thing I want to point out is a lot of these chips, a lot of these things I've done for years now have been current mode control. Sometimes there's a voltage mode control or there's some other methods, but those are predominantly the most common, okay? Uh, so current mode control and the voltage mode as far as the feedback, the overall feedback. All right, so the important thing on this, you can tell it's a forward converter because the dots of the transformer are, when this guy's conducting, this is positive, this is positive, and current's flowing through that diode. So they're flowing, at the same time current's flowing through the primary, it's flowing through the secondary, so that's a forward mode converter. And then we have an inductor, because you have to store that energy in between pulses. So kind of like a flyback transformer would, but now it's over here. So this circuit from over here, it looks kind of like a buck converter, okay? And we have our uh, Ford diode that charges that inductor. When we get a pulse here, we get a pulse here, charge that inductor. When this guy turns off, that inductor still wants current flow. And so this diode allows it to through this capacitor. So during the off time, when this guy's off, this guy takes over and that's, that's a freewheeling or flyback or whatever you want to call it. Uh, that's the, what's happening there. Okay, so that's part of our Ford. And our board over here, we're gonna pl replace these diodes with uh, FETs, so synchronous FETs. And I'll talk about that next video, how how that's done. But that, so you instead of getting, say, a 0 0.4, 0 0.5 voltage drop with some current, uh, five amps, for instance, you know, so you're getting that power loss, try to drop that below 0 0.1 even. Okay, so save some uh, power there, get higher efficiency. Which these guys are going to be in the high 80s to low 90s uh, percent in efficiency, which is pretty darn good. Okay, so now the way this converter works, when this guy turns on, he, like I said, transfers energy, or when he turns off, then this guy free wills here. You know, what about this, the magnetic field inside this transformer? When you turn that off, you're going to get that big old kickback, right? Like a relay. Like a lot of people understand that, where you get that voltage kickback. Well, let me show you. I'm going to redraw this real quick, and we can put another winding in there to conduct energy during that off time, and that's the free willing or the flyback winding, okay? Uh, tertiary winding, the third winding, okay? Let me show you that real quick. All right, back. <laughs> so I added this winding and I kind of just stacked them this way. I could have shown this, you know, up or down or something, some other way. Uh, but this is one way to show it. And basically this point is the same as this. So it's for across the input and you see the dot is down here. So when this guy's plus, this guy's turned on, current's flowing this way. Then this guy's plus and current's flowing through here. This guy's plus and this guy's minus, so that diode's reverse bias, nothing's happening. But when this guy turns off, so this diode allows this inductor to keep letting current flow the direction it wants to, because it doesn't want to change instantly. Neither does this one. So what happens with this one is now when it reverses, well, plus is here, and then all of a sudden, you turn this off, the voltage kicks back, right? It flips over. So now you get plus up here, minus down here. And then this guy conducts. So now that energy in this transformer, that magnetizing energy, gets dumped into the input. Okay? So that's a normal forward converter. I've done a bunch of designs with this kind of transformer design. And then active clamp. Uh, designs came along and I thought it was a way for people that didn't know how to design magnetics to make a four converter. And I thought, well, I know how to do it. So I kind of, you know, and I didn't have anybody explain it to me and I had asked questions from 
vendors and no one could really explain to me you know why they're beneficial then one day i tried it and then i went holy cow now now i got it now i see what the benefit is so let me show you real quick what that is all right our active clamp for converter <laughs> all right there's a couple different ways to do this this with the p-channel fat you can uh I'm going to explain this, but you can take the energy and take it from the magnetic field, dump it down to the return, or you can dump it back up. But if you do that, you can use an end channel. Anyway, you got a floating drive and all that. Down here, you can drive it right off of here, just like you drive this guy off of. Okay, this one requires a P-channel fit, which I tried to draw the arrow. Yeah, my fit doesn't look awesome, <laughs> but sorry about that. Uh, and so I show this is a reset signal coming off of the control chip. So it drives this guy, turns it off, waits a moment, and then turns this guy on. Doesn't want to turn them both on at the same time, so there's some dead time there. This capacitor capacitively couples this guy so there's no DC path. Okay, So when this guy gets charged up, this guy effectively is out of the circuit. And then when he turns off, the voltage here wants to kick up, and as it does, it charges up this capacitor, but look, there's a body diode, so even though there's some dead time between this guy turning on and off and the reset uh, gate turning on and off, this body diode inside the FET will let that capacitor start charging and letting current from that transformer, kind of like over here, how this capacitor works with this diode, Let's current flow this way. Current wants to keep on flowing down. FET turns off, so now it's got a path this way. And then the FET turns on. It lowers that voltage drop here. And there's some magic that happens too. It actually pulls that cap, discharges it below the level. So the next time this guy turns on, the voltage here is like zero volt. So there's it's a kind of soft switching so soft switching is when you either have current at zero when you turn on so there's no current slash voltage turn on off or voltage is zero when this FET turns off for instance there's still a little bit of current flowing through it it doesn't turn off instantaneously you get switching losses they call right you get some losses here so with this uh, active clamp, it kind of helps reduce that switching loss thing. So you actually, your efficiency actually goes up, which when I found that out, I stopped doing my regular tertiary winding and jumped into the active clamp world. And several vendors make these chips. Uh, the TI-1 is a pretty awesome chip, pretty easy to use. It's arguably the best chip to use if you're if you just want to simplify things and also have some really good resolution and things like that, like a lot of the tolerances and things like that, the TI chip compared to other chips is really nice. Okay. So anyway, all right, guys, let's come over here and look at the board. All right. And here is the close up of our board. It's pretty small, right? Now, one thing on a isolated converter you'll always notice is a transformer. That's how you get your isolation, almost always. Let's say almost always. And then with a four converter, you'll have an output inductor. Then an output bulk capacitor and some ceramics for high frequency stuff. So over on the input, high frequency caps. Now this guy, and then also a bulk capacitor. That is on the output, probably on the bootstrap, I'm guessing. There's the opto isolator. And you notice it cut out in the copper of the board. There's a big plane out here because it's a single voltage. Actually, if you notice, there's an island here, maybe an island down in here, but then this big plane here. And this right here, we have a plane and then another plane up here. But down here, you can see the isolation th through the transformer, the optocoupler. And there's a capacitor coupling input to output for common mode noise, most likely. Okay, and then there's two transistors on the output. 
those are going to be the synchronous rectifiers. Instead of shocky diodes, we have uh, MOSFETs. Okay, let's flip it over. Now, this is the input, right? Because we came over this way. So you'll see the controller. And here's our inductor for our kickback. This is our inductor for our bootstrap circuit. And here's our two FETs on the primary side. And again, you see the barrier, the boundary between primary and secondary, with this uh, where the copper is cut out. All right, then just a whole bunch of peripheral type capacitors and resistors, it seems like. These diodes and resistors and so on are probably for the MOSFETs on the synchronous rectification to help drive those. And we have some test connectors here and our terminal lugs here to put in our power. So we're going to go ahead and wire this up. Next video we'll have this all uh, configured with a load and our power source and we'll run this through some paces, okay? Do some testing. Alright guys, so let me know what you think about this kind of converter, these ISA converters. Some people call them offline converters. This one technically is a, an offline converter or at least this board because it operates at a lower DC voltage, but it can very easily be made into an offline converter where you're taking the uh, 50 or 60 hertz power, your 110 to 20 volts, converting it to a DC, and then running it through a converter, okay? So let me know, know what you guys think. Okay. Hey, uh, the follow-up video, uh, we're gonna do a bunch of testing, and we're gonna look at this, we're gonna look at the ripple, we're going to look at the voltage on the waveforms of the FET switching and even on the output. We're going to look at a bunch of different signals so you can kind of see what things look like, okay? And get a better idea how this guy is working. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Thanks patrons for all your support and thanks everybody for watching the videos. So, hey, see you next time.